Good morning, fellow privateers. Welcome to the week ahead, Privateer FX. It's two hours before the equity open here in the US. I'm sure all of you have seen on Twitter the rioting, the looting, all the violence going on in the US and a lot of the major cities, mine included, Chicago. Um, it's just an awful sight to see. Um, I can't say that I'm all that surprised at the reaction given, um, you know, the event, I think it was last Monday, um, in Minnesota, Minneapolis, um, where the cop killed the guy that he arrested. And it's all on tape and it's nine minutes and it's very disturbing and um so i'm not i'm not at all surprised at the backlash i mean in chicago there has been looting magnificent mile which is michigan avenue it's kind of the, the main shopping hub in the city uh video of looters breaking the windows at nike town and just walking out with merchandise and it's going up and down you know the, the the major shopping street in chicago a friend of mine's office building it's about a 45 story building pre-war building they blew out all the windows along the ground floor um there's a bank branch in the building which they lit on fire luckily they were able to put out that fire and he spent all day with the, his cleanup crew uh, boarding up the windows on the ground floor. And, you know, it, it's crazy. Um, at least in Illinois, the shutdown, the stay at home order relaxed a bit as of Friday where office buildings were allowed to open and restaurants with outdoor dining and things like that. Um, and literally within 24 hours they're trying to burn the fucking city back to the ground and shut it and shut it right back down and this is all kind of part of the fourth turning um you know that people have spoken about for the past five ten years um you know this leads to social unrest so everyone was pent up we've been under lockdown orders for almost three months. So you've got a lot of pent up frustrated people, violent households, that sort of thing. And this was just the match that lit the stick of dynamite. Um, the timing could have been any worse, really, as the US kind of comes out of its, its lockdown and uh, only to be, um, you know, I think a lot of these major cities, I think there's like 25 cities in the U.S. that are now on like an 8 o'clock eight curfew. So we're going to see how that goes. I, I suspect today is going to be just as bad. Chicago, I believe uh, the protests are starting again at 2 o'clock, so about an hour ago. Um, you know, things tend to get worse as later in the day and as it, the sun goes down you know, the, the vampires come out. So anyhow, enough of that. It's sad to see, like I said, I'm not at all surprised, um, but you know, the looting and the rioting and all that, it, it's not gonna bring back the guy's life and his name escapes me. It's all, all over the place, but anyhow. Um, so let's get to the markets. Um, I don't feel like there's gonna be much of a reaction like a reaction to the equities. Um, maybe a little bit lower Wall Street, we can have them down just a tad. Um, I haven't looked at it in a few hours, but you know, nothing crazy. Um, if I look at some of the risk, um, let me just, let me just check this real quick. I look at some of the risk currencies here on the open, you know, uh, New Zealand is just open. It's still, uh, it's only 6 a.m. in Sydney, so, you know, things have not really opened. We're in the twilight zone. You know, the Aussie dollar's down 
10, 15 ticks. The euro is up about 10 or 15. Um, <laughs> if I look at dollar yen, so it looks like they, they are selling a little bit of cross yen here on the open. Um, you know, nothing major. And uh, looking at this Wall Street weekend from IG, uh, they're expecting the market open to open about 30 basis points lower, so nothing major. Uh, anyhow, so let's get to the charts quick. I don't want to go too long here today. Um, Euro Aussie is something we've been trying to stay long of. Um, we had the false break. This pink line is the 200 day moving average. You can see how it held here on the 30th. It held again on May 11th. We broke, closed under it. The false break. Next day, we reversed. We were trying to do a bullish engulfing day and didn't quite get there because um, it closed off the highs, but we did close back above it, and then Friday was, uh, or Thursday was a bit of a bullish day, and then Friday was down, down a little bit. Um, you know, if you're, if you're looking to be long, you're Aussie, this is basically, you think that the equity market is, has run its course, which I'm not sure we're there yet. We are getting very close to levels that I would, will sell, and I'll, we'll get to that in a bit, but, you know, your Aussie is a good one for anyone that is looking to play risk on risk off. Um, if we take a look at, we'll go down and uh, look at the components of this Euro dollar. Euro dollar is on a breakout. Um, this is one of the biggest kind of one week moves we've seen in ages. You can see it was up uh, four of the five days last week. Um, we did break a trend line. I thought I had these drawn, but I guess not. Um, seen some people draw something along these lines you know it's not bad it's three touches kind of you know it's not not from the dead balls high up in March um, but it coincided with the break of the 200 day which as you can see we have not closed above it since March 27th um, the euro is going to continue to grind higher I think you know, we've got the ECV this week, so there's some there's some event risk. Um, but it looks like they're coming to some sort of an agreement, major agreement, which, um, you know, we could see Euro north of, you know, at 120 in a heartbeat if things go according to plan. With the French and the German and their proposals. So it's got its mojo going right now. Uh, it's trading above the 200-day. As long as we kind of hang above 110, I, I still like buying dips. Um, and Aussie dollar is at a massive level. We closed just pretty much on the 200 day, at least on my Bloomberg chart, it was 200 days. It looks like it's just above it here. But um, we have the old highs. Um, let me find my horizontal. And you can see this, if you remember, on March 9th was the Asia, I think it was in Asia, where we crashed down Aussie and Kiwi just collapsed. Um, March 6th, March 9th, that would have been the Sunday open. Um, it just had kind of a flash crash type bar. And the high of that day, interestingly enough, it was 66.85. You can see here on Wednesday, we got touched it. Thursday, we're shy of it, and then Friday, right up and touch again. This is a massive level. We've got three highs. I mean, two are only a couple days apart, but then we had the one way back here. <coughs> Excuse me. So it's a really big level. Um, there's also a Fibo up here, a three-quarter Fibo, which I haven't drawn. Um, I I like being short here, um, you know, with a stop above 67. Um, you know, maybe like, you know, like a 30, 40 point stop. So, um, and that plays into my, my long Euro Aussie idea. Um, dollar yen had, it, had, it, had something going for a day and that day was Friday. You can see this long tail. I don't know what the hell happened. You know, we broke some horizontal support at 107.40, got down to 107.08 and then it just rallied, um, with risk. Uh, you know, Trump spoke. Late in the day, it was before the market 
was closing. So we suspected that it would be um, the market would take it as a positive, and indeed it did. Um, you can see the S&P minis here if we look at just the 15 minute chart. You can see what it did. This is when he started speaking. Um, we sold off down to 29.96, and then we rallied up and we closed at 20.50 or 30.57. So, um, you know, a big, big rally late in the day. Um, more bark than bite coming from Trump, but you know, the situation with China isn't going away anytime soon. And you know, Trump can. Trump can play this card for a bit longer. As long as equities are hanging in there, you know, he can keep sounding hawkish against China, blaming them for the virus, you know, sanctions, blah, blah, blah. Um, if equities come under pressure, he's going to have to back off. So speaking of equities, uh, S and P's, let's see if I have this acceleration line. I think I have it on the cash weekly cash line. I must have it on one of my other charts. Um, but anyhow, if you go back and draw this line, I believe it was from somewhere, I think we started around here. Um, it's funny, it doesn't look that must be drawing it wrong. Anyhow, there was a line that came in. There was a line that came in. It doesn't look right here. It looks better on my Bloomberg chart. Um, it came in right around, I think it was 31.10. And you can see here, this is a weekly. When we broke 31.10 that week, so we had come off, broke 31.10 that week, which was late February. That was the gap open lower. Um, let me widen this out so you can see the charts. So this is this is the cash for the CFD. Um, so we closed here the week of the 18th, and then the week of was it that big a gap? Yeah, I got it was like a hundred point gap or so. Gap lower here, and we you know went straight down from there with only one kind of weekly pause until we made the low and had the big bullish week off the lows. Um, but 31.10 was like a key uh, line. And once we broke back below it, it shit the bed. So I am hoping for a rally up to kind of 3100 to 3130. And I will be looking to sell it and, you know, looking for a, uh, a decent pullback, you know, more than five percent because all the pullbacks have been um they've all been five five six percent in this whole uptrend and you can't see that it's not reflected on this weekly chart but let's just draw a fib a theoretical you know if let's say we got up to 3120 so right kind of in my 3100 to 3130 uh zone a retracement all the way back down to 2770 would be uh, a one-third retracement and you know that's 350 some points so i could see that happening and, and it would be i think it'd be a good place to stop you can see we had a weekly low here at um you know right here at 27.65 so uh the 200 week is down here closer to the half fib so you know again we don't know where the high is going to be and how it's going to reverse but if we start trading on a 3100 handle you need to be watching like hourly charts, looking for reversals, looking for bearish engulfing days. You know, look at your hourly, look at your dailies. Um, and, you know, I'm trying to prepare you well in advance. Well, this could be, you know, a few hours in advance, who knows, um, of the potential um, top topping formation. Um, and, and then the reaction, how the market would react. Um, if you look at the 200 day, let me go back to this. Uh, where is it? Here it is. 
can see that we're right above it. So it's right around 3,000. We touched just below there on Friday. You know, we had the doji day. Then we had this little long-tailed hammer type formation. So I, I'd really like to see it back up into, you know, kind of even like this high, 3136. So here it's easier to see on the daily. So once we broke below 3215 and then there was the, the, the line that came in at around 3110, we shit the bed, went down 2850, went back up. I remember I was short and I was not feeling all that comfortable with this rally. It was this, you know, this doji day, um, perfect doji day, and then this huge up bar here. But it ran out of steam at 31.36. So that that's going to be. I'm going to I'm going to say right now we're doing this. I'm highlighting this, you know, real time because I haven't done my chart work on on this trading view. I've only done it on my other charting system, but. Um, that would be a great place for this to stop. So somewhere between 3100, 3140, we're going to call it. So that's S&P's. Uh, silver, still bullish, uh, was up 2.8%, I think, on Friday alone. It's broken out of these highs. It was consolidating here for a week. Uh, we are definitely going up to here, uh, close to 19. And our target for this over the next couple months is in the upper 20s. Um, so we're, we're liking that, um, and the gold silver ratio has been has been continuing to drift down. I don't have the chart here, but gold uh, gold silver is now down at 96.80. It closed out on Friday, and the 200 days 93.23. So let's watch that. Um, so we got equities, we did our currencies, and we did our metals yields. They aren't doing anything. It's a waste of time. Yield curve, and yield curve control is probably upon us. Uh, here's oil. It's a CFD. Close at 35.20 Friday. You know this could this could maybe just keep going. Uh, just want to fib out. I haven't been trading this. It's just hasn't hasn't been great. Um, you know, 40 is basically the two thirds of this whole move, and then 46. So again, it'll trade. It'll trade with with risk. So it'll continue to grind higher. Um, if equities are staying bid, um, but again, it's a, you know, it's another market that is seems to be a bit overdone. Um, anyhow, I'm going to leave it at that because we're approaching 20 minutes. So. Have a great week ahead. You'll hear from us on the European Open, and uh, good luck out there. And uh, you know, not even as concerned about the the virus, and haven't been for the past few weeks. And now, you know, we're worried about uh, should we st be stocking up on ammo, which is something we kind of joked about three months ago, and what things like pandemics could do to society. Well, it's playing out in, in, in real time. So be careful out there. All the best. Cheers.